SoFi stock has fallen off a cliff in recent weeks, dropping over 25% in the past month. But is this a buying opportunity or should this be a warning sign and a time to sell? In this video, I will analyze SoFi stock and give you my thoughts on what is happening and whether this is a time to buy or sell SoFi. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. SoFi stock has dropped. I, I will explain why this happened and why SoFi could bounce back stronger than ever. Later in this video, I will explain exactly what price I expect SoFi to hit before the reversal starts. This will be within the next few days, so keep watching until the end and let me know if you agree with my analysis or not in the comment section. I will try to answer the most important question. When is the best time to buy SoFi stock? Before we get into the video, I want to take the time to thank all you guys who watched my recent videos. After taking such a long break from YouTube, it was good to hear from so many of you and it really means a lot to me. Smashing the thumbs up costs literally nothing, but it helps the channel out a lot. Can we get another 300 likes on this video? Let's make it happen. And subscribe to the channel if you're new. I will be doing regular stock videos again for the rest of the year. Finally, I want to point out that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Now let's get straight into it. So let's take a very quick look at this short article, which makes some very good points and shows us that SoFi stock could be a no-brainer buy in 2024. Now it has been an incredible roller coaster for SoFi stock since going public in 2020. SoFi hit an all-time high of 25.78 in February 2021, but since then has dropped more than 71%. But things did improve last year in a major way as the stock rocketed 116% in 2023. So what makes SoFi a no-brainer and what makes SoFi a good investment? SoFi was founded in 2011 with a focus on making education more affordable for students. Consequently, student loans were its most important lending product. With the possibility of more borrowers looking to refinance, this could lead to strong growth for SoFi, which specializes in this product. And this could result in higher revenue and interest payments. Now, the management team, led by CEO Anthony Noto, does not expect student loans to pick up immediately in any meaningful way, instead exhibiting a slow and steady climb. Now, I only wanted to take a quick look at this article. I will be analyzing the figures much closer later in the video, so stick around for that. But there is also a major downside risk. With the Department of Education putting a pause on student loan payments in 2020, this came to an end last year, and the data shows more than 40% of borrowers missed their first payments in October. Seeing 40% of borrowers miss their first payment might be indicative of a broader economic weakness. If a recession happens in the US sometime in 2024, it's reasonable to expect more consumers to miss their payments. And I will look closer at this and what to expect if we have a hard crash in 2024 later in this video. But there was some big news in the past week too. Chipotle partners with SoFi to offer student loan matching program and this will provide new employee assistance program featuring student loan benefits, access to mental health resources and much more. Through SoFi, the company will match up to 4% of an employee's salary through contributions to the retirement account if the employee makes eligible student loan repayments. Now, as we've seen a moment ago, 40% of borrowers missed their first payment just a couple of months ago. And that level of missed payments does increase the risk of defaults, but this kind of program makes the loan repayments more beneficial with the company matching up to 4% of the employee's salary to the retirement account. So not only is the employee getting extra contributions to the retirement plan, but this kind of is an incentive which could help reduce the risk of loan defaults. And it will be interesting to see if many other companies introduce similar plans going forward. Anyways, SoFi will be issuing their latest earnings report on Monday, so let's take a look at their most recent financials to see where the company stands and what is likely to happen next week. So looking at the balance sheet, we can see that SoFi have total assets of $27.9 billion and total liabilities of $22.6 billion. This gives total equity of just over $5 billion. Now after the January drop, which has seen SoFi drop over 25% of its price, the market capitalization of the company is now just over $7.3 billion. So overall, this is a very healthy standing for SoFi Technologies. Now, as to be expected with this type of company, loans held at fair value is the company's biggest asset, with interest-bearing deposits being SoFi's biggest liability. 
but the company does have significant cash on hand with over 2.8 billion dollars this is 100 percent increase in cash since december 2022 so overall a very very strong balance sheet now looking at the company's profit and loss we can see that sofi technologies has total net revenues of 1.5 billion we can see this right here however they have total expenses of 1.8 billion and therefore have a net loss for the nine months of 348 million dollars so this is a massive net loss figure this is huge 348 million dollars in nine months is a massive loss and at first glance this does look extremely bad but when we look closer at the figures we will see that 247 million of this is made up of a goodwill impairment which happened in the three months ended september 30th now if we remove this from the calculations because this is a one-off impairment that would mean that so far the real net loss for those three months is actually only 19 million dollars that's the net loss of 266 million minus the impairment of 247 million and this is a massive improvement over the same period of the previous year of 40 of 74 million dollars of a loss and sofi management have been very clear that they are going to become profitable in the fourth quarter which we will see on monday this will be a momentous occasion for sofi but not everybody agrees with these expectations before i look at this and before i look at the charts to analyze the best entry point guys if you're new to the channel consider subscribing and hit the thumbs up it helps the channel out a lot and it shows me that you want to see more sofi content now when we look at market beat a few things become very obvious very quickly first of all the stock is trading in the lower half of both its 50 day range and 52 week range but the current trading volume in the past few days is far above the average trading volume of 40 million shares it also says here that 13 percent of the float is sold short so although this is too low to see a short squeeze right now this is something to keep in mind looking at the most recent analyst ratings we can see the analysts have been slashing their price targets the most recent of these with a price target drop from $15 to $12 however the lowest target here is $650 and this is marginally below the current share price now looking at the charts we can see that SoFi stock has a very strong level of support at about $7.10 anytime the stock has dropped below this the shares have been snapped up and it has moved back above this again within three or four days even when sofi dropped to its 52 week low in november it was back above this support level within 10 days and has not broke that level since however there is also very strong level of resistance at around 850 and if the stock could break above this the next level to break would be about 920 now in my opinion there's a lot more upside than downside for sofi stock right now despite the fact that analysts are cutting their price targets i think that they're underestimating the latest earnings report and i feel that the price will go and i feel that the price will go up this week from the current price of 760 up to between 850 and 920 which would be up to a 20 percent increase so guys if it doesn't hit that rate i'm pretty confident about that if it doesn't if the earnings report is good and beats expectations and the price does not reach the level that i'm thinking between 850 and 920 then make sure you come and tell me i'm wrong sofi technologies a breakout may be ahead now this is an article on seeking alpha and if you want and if you want to read the full article i have put a link to this in the description below also check out the very first link in the description if you're not already signed up to Seeking Alpha, you can sign up with my link and get up to 50% off a yearly subscription. At the moment, Seeking Alpha are giving a seven day trial, so check this out. If you don't like it, then cancel it within the seven days at no cost. Personally, I love the number of articles that are on here and they give a lot of different perspectives on the stocks. So check out Seeking Alpha using the link below. SoFi Technologies is expected to report strong earnings with the potential for a blowout release member growth and potential for gap profitability are convincing leading to a potential breakout in the stock now i'm only going to take a quick look at this article but there is many more of these sofi technologies analysis on seeking alpha check these out in the links below so we should be expecting record 2023 results sofi technologies added an impressive 
717,000 new members to its business in Q3, taking into account member, mo member momentum. I think it's probable that SoFi ended 2023 with a record number of members using its products. And we can see here the consistent growth of SoFi numbers over the past four years. There is now a possibility that SoFi will report the highest number of member ads ever for Q4. The market expects a break-even quarter for SoFi after the fintech said it targets positive gap earnings in Q4 2023. And as we've seen earlier in the financials for Q3, SoFi was extremely close to achieving this. Reaching this break-even milestone could be a catalyst for investors to reevaluate SoFi as a profitable growth stock making this earnings report the most important earnings release in SoFi's recent history, which leads to the most important question of how management have performed in meeting expectations in the past. It is, after all, management's expectation that they're going to be profitable in this earnings report. So should you trust SoFi management? A lot of this analysis relies on what SoFi management has told us, and so far they have proven extremely trustworthy. Here is the revenue guidance compared with their results for every single quarter since 2021. As we can see, SoFi has never missed its guidance. And on average, it beats the midpoint of this guidance by 22 million per quarter. They predictably outperform the revenue guidance. So how about the profitability guidance? And here is the guidance compared to its performance. Again, as we can see here, they have never missed on EBITDA either. And it and beat the midpoint of their guidance by an average of $15 million. The pattern here is obvious. SoFi guides conservatively and then outperforms. But of course there are risks. It's possible that management is wrong for the first time in years and they fail to meet the expectations, which seems unlikely. There is also a macro risk. That we could enter a recession in 2024, which I mentioned earlier, Management did guide for this possibility in 2023, but has not specified anything for 2024. Again, watch the earnings report closely, but I think that this is unlikely. As long as management are correct, SoFi will continue to beat analyst estimates. The earnings report next week will show profitability for the first time. Their full year 2024 guidance should be above the analyst estimates of 2.51 billion, in revenue and six cents EPS. If their track record holds true, they will then systematically beat those estimates and slowly rise throughout the year. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you've watched all the way through this video and enjoy my content, please hit the like button, it really helps the channel out. And if you're new, hit the subscribe button and bell notification and connect with me on socials, all the links are in the description below. Nothing in my videos is financial advice in any way. I'm not a financial advisor. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.